Well, really, it started in the year 2008. Now, in 2008, I endeavored to start filming a series called Beyond Survival, and many of you uh, are familiar with it. Uh, it it's, uh, was the next step in the evolution of what I was doing as a filmmaker. Now, just before I went out to film Beyond Survival, at least a couple of years before, I had become friends with a gentleman named Brian Potvin. He was one of the, the founding and main members of a rock band up in Canada called the Northern Pikes. And they had many uh, top ten hits. It's a phenomenal band, terrific songs. If you're not familiar with the Northern Pikes in Canada, check them out. Well, Brian and I uh, struck up a friendship. He was a fan of Survivor Man. And then he didn't know that I was a musician, so I started playing him some of my material from earlier times, which he lovingly called art folk. Oh, it's art folk. I love it. My song Clouds, for example, was one song that he motioned to as being one of his favorites from my debut CD. You can check that out. You can go on Spotify. Check out my song Clouds. But when you do it, uh, sit back, relax, have an herbal tea, and listen to Clouds and put it on headphones or a really good stereo system, lie on your back and listen to it. It's also one of my favorite songs too. So Brian, you know, appreciated that about me and we struck up a friendship and said, well, you know, maybe we could do some writing together. Uh, and then we ended up releasing an EP, uh, Les Stroud and the Pikes. Also, you can check that out on, uh, on Spotify or all your music, music platforms, which was an EP I recorded with most of the members of the, the, the original band, the Northern Pikes, and we just called it Les Stroud and the Pikes. So we did that EP. Now along comes this Beyond Survival opportunity. And I said, listen, you know, to Brian, I said, why don't you come with me and let's, let's do something special here. I have this opportunity where I'm going to be going around the world and I'm going to be taking part in a lot of these different earth ceremonies. And certainly I hope to anyway. We, we're going to film all these. But why don't we try to find musicians and, and music along the way, everything from street musicians to uh, getting, getting different groups of musicians together to record in the studio, to just the, the remote indigenous music that might be happening. So we did. Brian came along for the ride, and uh, he operated uh, Logic Audio on a, on a laptop. Fast forward to getting back home. We're back here, in, in, and, and we're in the edit suites, and I'm editing the series. And Brian and I are looking at all the tracks. And what really grabbed my attention was the rhythmic structure and the melodic structure of a lot of the music that came from the more uh, from from when we were out in the jungle, we we're out in the desert. Not so much what we did in the studio, although that was there too, recording different instruments in places like Mong uh, was it Mongolia or Madagascar? Ah, it's become a blur. Madagascar, uh, but also really out while we were doing the trance dances and the seed ceremonies and the Zulu. Uh, scarification ceremony. Those recordings really struck me. We came into the studio, Brian and I, and at one point I said, you know, we've really got to do something about the Arctic. And we started listening to what we had filmed there with the throat singing and with the drumming. And with the throat singing, I heard a rhythm. <laughs> That's a rhythm if I ever heard one. And I said, you know, we really, I want to play off this. I want to play off this rhythm. In the case of Arctic Mistress, the song, 
it, this one originated from Brian. He went home and he was listening and, he, and he, we, we put that, that rhythm on a loop and I said, I don't know, play around with it, Brian, see what you come up with in terms of chord structure. And he came back into the studio with a simple four chord movement. which just changed when we went into the verse. With a slight bridge in the middle. And he had this, and he was sort of playing it along with the rhythm, you know. But he was very focused on the sound of this, and he was quite right about it. He wanted the sound to be very uh, sharp, brittle, uh, icy so that it would match with the arc feel of the Arctic. Um, so the acoustic guitar is not really going to do that, but electric and, and just having this sound that just echoed of the Arctic and the space of the Arctic. And I loved it when he played it for me. I said, can you just leave that with me for a bit? I wanna, and I took that part home and I thought, you know, I don't wanna put a lot of words into this. I don't wanna be wordy. I wanted it to be very spacious in terms of my lyrics. And that's when I was thinking a lot about the chorus breathing the Arctic air. And can I hold the note that long? You know, of course I can hold it physically, but should I? And, and I just, it felt so right. But when I came back with this, he, he just said, I love it, I love it, you know? And so I started, you know, I wanted to see I wanted to feel A wind blow across my face I wanted to see Her beautiful northern lights And so I wanted to play off that a bit. I thought, well, what if... But what if it was like leaving a lover behind? And my arctic mistress as it were here we go without further ado welcome back again for those of you who've seen this video and for those of you who have not welcome to the arctic this is arctic mistress Let me, 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 let me,